Hello, my name is Jim Lee, and I start off by asking the question, do you know who you really are? Well, I'm asserting now that we are the light. We came here to be the light. In fact, we are light workers. And in fact, this world needs us right now to be the light and express the light. But in order to do that, we need to access something. We need to access it. And what I am saying in this particular talk, which is the pillar of self-love, that one of the things that we need to do right now, simply start loving ourselves, hating ourselves, despising ourselves, critically thinking about ourselves and judging ourselves is not going to turn on this light potency within us to take us to the next level. So, Let's start off with this premise, and it is simply this. We, you and I, are a unique and individualized expression of the divine. We, I would say, are a miracle of the infinite creative force of the universe. There is no one in the entire world that's exactly like you and I. And it's really good to be us, to be who we are. So when we was looking at it, and when I was growing up, I believed that uh, we were born in original sin. And you know what? Since then, I've come to believe something differently like my buddy Reverend Dr. Michael Beckwith, when he says, we are born in original blessing. And so, in the creation myth in the Bible, God declared that everything that he made was good. This means you and I. And also I want to quote from Ethel Waters, and she was a Broadway actress and jazz singers starting off in the 1920s. And she said this, I am somebody cause God don't make no junk. And, and this too, you could just resonate. I, I know the grammar isn't all that good, but you could feel the energy that comes from that. So this means that Start off by saying that you and I, we got to love ourselves. God didn't make any junk. We're good. And we can lavish ourselves with self-love because that's who we are. We are, in fact, love and we were made in love. We are a child of God and we're made in the image and the likeness of God. Ah, Just breathe that in. Because you and I are marvelously made in love with love. Now, if you're watching this, I'm just going to assume that you believe this. We are, I would say, taking a step further today. And then not only do I want to believe this, but I find some ways in which we can experience this for ourselves right here and right now, because the truth of the matter is each and every one of us could use this type of self-love to boost ourselves up, but also this planet could use beings like us to be the light so we can lift this planet and everyone that's vibration up to a, a higher place. Wouldn't you agree that that's what's needed right now? So now what's stopping us from Really, really loving ourselves. Well, one of the things that I would say is our over-identification with the mind. And in particular, with our thoughts and feelings. And I call them the judging mind. I call it is a scenario of the egoic separate self that comes along with this body. This judging mind has all of these thoughts and emotions around and is it comes from our feeling and our belief that we're separate from the divine and from everybody else. And with that, we judge everything in life. And most sadly, we even judge ourselves. 
And I know I am so guilty of this. <laughs> this judge or this critical thinker has, I would say, us looking and feeling things that we are, like we're imperfect, like we're not good enough, like we're not unlovable. I mean, we aren't unlovable, you know, and this judge having has us living in this separate space, like we are all inclusive in this body. And with that comes along fear and I would say everything that is not love and not wholeness, just the total opposite. Well, in Matthew, the seventh chapter, the first verse, it says, Judge not that you be not judged. And so the, the word for judge in this particular instance comes from uh, a Greek word. Now that in the Greek, there are 12 different shades of the meaning for judge, but this one means condemnation. So actually, it should, I would say, our 11th commandment should be, thou shalt not condemn thyself. And so now what we're saying is, don't condemn thyself. And so we need to overcome this over-identification with the mind, with our thoughts and our feelings, and to, in fact, switch identities, switch from this egoic identification to one of awareness. Now, what do I mean by this? We can't use our mind. We've got to go a different route. We must go directly to awareness. And, and the awareness is the place, what I'm talking about, I would call it right before we have a thought, right before we have an emotion. That is an awareness. Right before we have a feeling, right before any of these things come up, is the pure awareness. This is the place where we are made in the image and likeness of God, where we can be the witness to these thoughts, be witness to all these thoughts and emotions, but not self-identify with it because we're not them. So we want to change our vibration to be one of attaching to this awareness. And this awareness is the seat of our, I call our I am consciousness. This is who we really are beyond the thoughts, beyond all of that. This is our true identity. And this is the seat of love, wisdom, peace, and wholeness. This I am consciousness accepts everything just the way it is. It is totally accepting. It is absolutely neutral. And this awareness is just present to everything. The I am consciousness is the source of what we need most. Love, wisdom, peace, wholeness. And I would call it just just oneness. So, to identify with this I am, I am consciousness, we're just going to accept everything and love ourselves. Yes, that means even our strengths and weaknesses. And the advantages of this is that we can even accept our body and all of its quirks and what it is to be that there's nothing left out. We, in this consciousness, just aware of the totality and of everything. In other words, we are able to step into the I am consciousness and love ourselves. And we can actually say, I am love. And we can actually say, I am perfect but not from the mind's point of view. Um, because that the, the mental body thing, it deals in opposites, and 
it, what I would say, doesn't want to have struggle. It doesn't want to deal with the bad. It wants to judge them as wrong. We don't do that. So we're going to breathe now, and we are going to be in a dance with the light and the dark and see the divine in it all. We're now being this awareness. We're going to wrap our arms around everything and live in the revelation that truly everything is in service to the one, to the divine. But the mind can't do that. We've got, to, we've got to embrace everything, the good and the bad, because that's what really wholeness is. And something will come out of that. And you know the story of the gypsy moth that struggles to get out of the cocoon. In order for it to do it, it's, it's got to really work and work and work its way through this little hole in the cocoon so it can come out to freedom. But in order to do that, the struggle is not just a struggle. The struggle compresses all the fluids in the body and trims the body down and spreads out all of the nerve endings to the wings. And so when it finally comes out, he can fly or she can fly. And, it's, and the thing of it is, it looked like, why well, well, all of that work? But the work and the struggle and all of that was for a divine purpose so they could fly. So what I'm saying is the darkness and the light or the love and the struggle is a lifeblood of evolution. We are humans and we're the divine. We're the love child of, of heaven and earth combining. And in this, when we embrace everything, we create a consciousness that, that is larger than anything that we have ever known. And it is so inclusive. But the thing of it is, it allows us to fly. So beginning now, let's stop putting ourselves down. How often do you say negative things about yourself? How often do you put yourself down? How often are you critical of yourself? So, just want you to know, you really can't stop doing that. It's going to occur. The thing of it is, we're not going to identify that. What we want to identify is that we are unique. We're a one-of-a-kind miracle of God's creative plan. There is no one like us and exactly like us, and we're here on purpose. We, we were made a mistake. <laughs> Remember, God did not make a mistake in making you and I. You and I matter. Even with the imperfections, even with our critical thinking, all of us there. So love all of it. Don't resist it, but embrace it and then let our I am consciousness maneuver in such a way that love, wisdom, insights can come and support us in expressing the light of who we are. So I want to vow just to saying this, I know who I am. I am perfect. I'm golden. I love me. And with that, we get to express love. We can turn our light on. We can then be guided by wisdom, love, insights, and direction from this I am consciousness. It begins with loving ourselves. There's an affirmation I'd like for us to take a look at, and it's this. Breathe this in. I am divine humanity and human divinity in sacred partnership. Breathe that in. Feel that. Know that's your true identity. God bless you and let your light shine.